But I was told that he might have a little interest about television or something, but he didn't have any particular idea. So I way over, it took a long time to fly to Honolulu in those days. <laughs> a long time, a lot of hours. And um, Perhaps he, we should explain that James Michener was already a considerable success and was the author of South Pacific. Oh, James Michener was a major novelist, major writer in America, and certainly the author of South Pacific. And of course, that's what I wanted from him, a show that's based in the South Pacific somehow. I didn't know quite what, but it seemed to be. Anyway, I wanted to have preliminary talks with him to see what we could come up with. He was a nice man. He met me at the airport at about 5.30 in the morning, quarter to six in the morning. And uh, there was no need for him to do that. He took me to the hotel and then said, I'll pick you up and whatever, and would come to my house for breakfast. And uh, I met with him and he, uh, his lovely Japanese wife, and he, he then uh, uh, said he, he would make an appointment to work with, start talks with me, work with me, uh, just as soon as I felt ready to go. And I said, well, I think I'll be all right. He said, you'll probably be more tired than you think. Anyway, I said, I'd like to get going. So we met for lunch that day and kept working and came up with this idea of a very simple idea because I wanted an anthology. I thought that was really my field and it was a good thing to do. So we had a boy on a boat and a guy, a young guy on a boat and I think we gave him one sidekick, and that was it. Thing. And Mishnah was to do the, all the Bible of the thing about the kinds of stories and some sample stories and all that. Well, he lit up to the idea very much, and uh, he liked it. And then uh, he said, you know, this boy has to be very glamorous, very, very uh, interesting guy. And we started the search for him, and we found, <laughs> luckily for him, for me, really, and for the show, uh, we found this guy. I've been looking everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. It's like Lana Turner. In the commissary at Fox. And I thought, my God, we've got to get him. And uh, I mean, he was great, great looking. He so would this be was what's a, called today a hunk. A hunk. But this was a real one. I mean, big six feet three, four. And, and a, a very attractive guy. So it turned out that he was under contract to Fox. So I thought, well, I guess he has absolutely no talent, and that was true. <laughs> but he did look wonderful, and they were trying, I guess, to use him for movies, and uh, uh, people weren't burning up the thing. So I thought he'd be great. And uh, we um, proceeded with a script to write a script. A script. Uh, Mitchner wrote one script. And uh, the thing was coming together, uh, Robert Aldrich said he'd direct it. Robert Aldrich? Yeah, you know, it was very nice. He said, I won't do the series, but I'll do the pilot. And um, uh, we signed Gardner McKay. Who that was the, was the name of the man. And the series was Adventures, uh, Adventures in, Paradise. in Paradise. Well, once the thing was getting on this way, it hadn't yet started, but we're going. Fox had a, uh, a big lake on the lot, tank, big open tank on the lot. So that's where we were going to shoot everything of the boat. We, we went to Catalina to do a couple of days of endless bypasses and all the things. So the ship was in good weather and bad weather. The boat was in good weather and bad weather and everything. Like that. And he looked great on the boat and everything. It, was a, it, it had a glamour to it and it was fine. But he couldn't act. He simply had that unfortunate lack of talent. He laughed about it himself. So uh, he suddenly got this wild publicity because a very intelligent lady, who I would have thought was past this, named Shana Alexander, who was with Life magazine then. A journalist. A journalist. Yes. She thought he was the cat's everything when she met him out here and did it. They did a cover of him. We hadn't yet done a show. Did a cover of him. A Life magazine. Cover. On Life magazine. And the whole thing that she had provided of text was, here is the Mr. Fabulous of 42, whatever it was, that um, he has the eyes of 
Tyrone Power. The ears of Clark Gable, I think. I don't know. The mouth of some, about four or five of the biggest, sexiest male movie stars. And this was our gardener, you see. What a sandal. If only he had something of Brando or something. Anyway, he uh, uh, took to it and he said, you know, I've never acted and everything, but this is very nice for me. So they had a t good teacher at Fox named Sanford Meisner, who was, had been an actor, was a good director. And he was working with him and Gardner was coming along, but it, it just wasn't good. Anyway, we did by carefully casting uh, experienced women opposite him. And I felt slightly older was a good idea so that we wouldn't expect this to be a running, a continuing thing. So we got a lot of the fading movie ladies, like Paulette Goddard and people. Now, of course, they weren't as old as they would be today. They were just older than he. I understand. Uh, like maybe 40-ish for his 25. So. And um, that seemed to work quite well because they were at least more experienced and they, and it, it made a good picture, I, I think. Well, it opened with dismal reviews because they'd already been exposed to this publicity of this is the greatest thing since... Great expectations. Oh, you know, and, and of course, it, what? well, that didn't bother the audience, I'll tell you that. The show took off. It did just well. On just what network handy. was this? ABC. ABC. Uh, this was ABC. And we had not made a pilot. We never made the pilot. We made the sale. And... Uh, and didn't make a pilot picture. Robert Aldrich did direct it when we were ready to. And that was a good, kind of a good idea because nobody could see quite absolutely. Every, they were intrigued. Uh, you know, the networks are always having sales conventions or something when you, before the seasons. So before we had put anything on film, they touted Gardner McKay all over the place. Well, every sponsor's wife, every daughter, every, I mean, they were, we just had this guy, that's all. And uh, as I say, it was just too bad that he couldn't act. And so we, we proceeded with him. Well, he finally began to show great emotion, but mostly in tantrums of saying, I told you I wasn't an actor and I can't do it. I can't do it and I'm not going to do it anymore. We had to keep calming him down. But then he discovered by some chance, I don't know how it happened, that he wasn't really under contract to Fox for television, only for feature pictures. This shows you how little the major studios thought of television in those days. They signed somebody, because he was getting very little money, the minimum fact, from them. But still, if they think he's a possibility for pictures, if they were thinking, they'd think he's a possibility for television. So he suddenly said, we were paying him something like $300 a week, and he said, I think 3000 would be a better starting, starting salary. So I, I, we were doing this at Fox. They, they were making the thing. And the Fox attitude, as it was on everything, completely do. Over my dead body. You know, what are you trying to do? Ruin the fucking studio? We'll break the fucking thing. And he just played his role very, better than he played anything else. He said, I, that's all right with me. We, we don't have to do it. You could maybe get me a picture, get me a picture. Well, they'd already sold this a great bill of goods. They got a year's, con you know, in those days, a season was 39 shows, yes. not, not six, four or six sample shows. And the 39 shows, if you want to be sure you got your people. And, and so that was a big layout. I don't know what they paid for it, by the way. And um, he got his money. He got his $3,000. To start with, and he went up from there. Well, I don't know. He told me that maybe, maybe, maybe compromise somewhere. But he wasn't getting three hundred. That's for sure. And he got a lot. And then they got raises and everything. So he did it for several years.